You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Ready to stand out, Army ROTC prepares you not only as a college student, but as a strong leader, allowing you to earn the rank of second lieutenant. You will be eligible for full tuition, merit-based scholarships, and develop leadership skills essential for your future. Start strong and enhance your college experience. Visit your campus Army ROTC representative today. To find out how you can earn up to a full tuition scholarship, visit GoArmy.com slash podcast to locate your closest ROTC program today. Army officers inspire strength in others. Paid for by the United States Army. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I only have a certain budget. No problem. Right now at the LASIK Vision Institute, get 20% off LASIK when treated in April. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes, plus guaranteed financing options. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your journey towards 2020 vision. Must mention this promotion to be treated in April of 2024 to qualify. 20% off standard price of wavelight procedure cannot be combined with any other offers. Go to GetLVILASIK.com for details. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I'm so busy right now. We offer a mix of convenient days and times, including 30-minute virtual appointments to fit your schedule. I would love it, but I have astigmatism. We treat thousands of patients with astigmatism every month with great outcomes. The LASIK Vision Institute is making your journey towards 2020 vision all about you. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your LASIK journey. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening. Hi. I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and ten blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate, I know jiu-jitsu, I drive like a gay, so when I'm coming to see you, see you. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. 
Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. I take a breath, I'm not gonna lose. This is what I came here to do. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host. Favorite host. Favorite host. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. And welcome into the program. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I am Rick Robinson. This is my show. We do this thing live every Sunday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on KLRNRadio.com, America's Podcast Network, and soon to be America's Broadcast Network. Technically, we're America's Broadcast Network now, because right now you're listening to us live on Spreaker. You're listening to us live on Live 365, or you could be. You are also listening to us on Xstream, as well as Facebook Live, uh, because I'm testing a few things. I am trying to get all the connective tissue working before we launch it for real, so I'm testing a few things tonight. I have discovered a couple things that I think the new setup will help with, like for those of you that may be checking out the Facebook feed for the first time or the X feed for the first time, you were like, dude, we just have like five minutes and nothing. That's because I just realized that nothing that I play through the streaming sides shows up through the video side because it's not actually playing through that particular program. So I have some equipment coming in the next few days that I think will have us help iron those things out. So I'm probably actually about to shut down the feeds for a second on the on the stream on the actual video sides, only because I wanted to test it for a few minutes and I have already figured out something that we are going to have to address. However, I wanted to be able to say that right now you are you could be listening to us both for all for all all from KLRMedio.com, Spreaker.com, Live 365, Facebook, and Twitter, and soon coming to YouTube and Rumble. And anywhere else I can find to put us, because this is 2024, and we're here to take over the world. All right, so let's get started here. I'm going to go ahead and shut the uh, the video stream down, because um, it, it, yeah, um, now that I've tested a few things, I've, I've found some other things that we need to work on. So anyway, I had all kinds of fun things planned for today, too. I had, like, cool little chirons, you know, that says, if you can see this, type FJB. Yeah, so... I'm I'm gonna learn how to have fun with all this stuff now that we're getting serious about making it happen. But anyway, you are still and can still be listening to us at klrmradio.com forward slash chat. Hope you guys are in there hanging out with the Chat Lives Matter crew. If you're not, and if you're listening to us on Spreaker, you can still chat with me over there. But I would still encourage you to go hang out in the chat room, or you might be listening through Live 
365. You never know. We've been over there for a few days. We're about to start ramping up some stuff over there. About to start doing 24 hour a day, seven day a week content. And I'm punching the clock. No later than 12 months from today, KLRN Radio will be a live stream on iHeartRadio. I've been wanting to do this for as long as I've been doing it. I finally figured out how to get it done. Now we're just going to get it done. So let's go. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a great Sunday night. I hope you ha- I hope you were I hope you're carrying over from Sunday night with Alan Ray. Our resident alien took the night off. He apparently had to go home or something. Yeah, I I think he's probably broke down in a space lane somewhere. But anyway, so we're here, we're live and there's tons and tons and tons of stuff to talk about. Um I don't even really know where to start because I'm used to doing longer shows now and this one's only an hour and I feel like I've already burned up a lot of time. So let's just dive right in. No monologue, I guess. I guess the monologue was we're here to take over the world, bitches. Uh, Watch this progressive student fall into the trap of admitting real reason Biden doesn't secure the border. This is from our friends over at Town Hall. Uh, This is written by Sarah Arnold. Today's Dateline. Um... The millions of illegal immigrants storming the United States border as a result of President Joe Biden's reckless policies is no accident. With Biden's approval rating too far gone to recover and the 2024 presidential election getting closer, the Democratic Party needs a solution to save themselves. Insert a broken border. So this is the part where they start telling you what we've already known, which allows for millions of illegal aliens to vote in U.S. elections. And who will they vote for? The candidate who is rolling out the red carpet for them. I'm not so sure about that. Because there have I I don't I don't know if you guys follow along with Fox News much, but there's actually been more than once that um that Waters has sent Johnny out. Because remember back in the day, Waters was O'Reilly's man on the street. So Waters has one now that he that, that he's the one behind the desk and his name's Johnny. And he's gone out several times and actually talked to illegal immigrants and they were like and he's like, so leave the border open or close it? Now that we hear you, close it. <laughs> they don't want anybody else coming in either. This is, so I don't know if this... Uh, anyway, so... Uh, so And who will they vote for? The candidate who is rolling out the red carpet for them, obviously. Republican lawmakers have warned that illegal aliens could register to vote and cast ballots in favor of Democratic candidates swaying the election in Biden's direction. If you look at what's going on at the border... When you've got so many illegal aliens pouring into our country, imagine the efforts used to get them to register to vote, and that's what this is all about. Secretary of State Michael Watson, uh, Republican Mississippi, it's about control. It's about continuing their power, and unfortunately, that puts our country in a terrible position. So it's immediate, and it's something where we hope they will respect our request to stop the program. Democrats have high hopes that their immigration policy will uh, will import voters to make up the loss of Biden voters due to his policies that have caused issues in America such as inflation and crime. A left-wing University of Utah student admitted to Turning Point USA and conservative commentator Charlie Kirk that the reason Biden refuses to close the border is so that he can secure millions of votes that he otherwise wouldn't receive from Americans. And just for fun, here's the clip. I believe Biden's going to win in a landslide. Lowest unemployment in 60 years, baby. What about inflation? You, you have any questions about inflation? Inflation's going down. Actually, it's going up. It's going down. It's gas prices are what, down. What, 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 gas what, prices are down. What, inflation is down. What, what, hold Hope. On. See. What, what, why is the Fed then raising rates? How many illegals are coming across the border every day? A lot. So about ten to 15,000 a day. Do you think Joe and Biden... And they're all going to vote Dem. You're okay. Can you say that again? The illegals... Well, illegals. Uh, yeah, they're coming here. They're going to vote Democrat, and we're going to win. So, so you are you are admitting that the so you're admitting the border is a political tactic by the Democrat Party. Joe Biden is opening the floodgates of this country because he wants to hold on to political power. We've been saying this for a long time. Proof. Proof. You just admitted it. What is he doing to secure the border? When you have 15,000 people a day coming across your southern border, who cares? that's not a mistake. Who cares? But, but who cares? Do you believe in borders? Uh, as like a... I believe that 
No, uh, no, no borders. No. And since One I shut down the, the video feed, y'all can't see him, but he's a ginger. So Final pitch really for Joe surprised. Biden. Uh, no, no borders, lots of war, more spying, and bankrupt the country. He is still going to win. You guys might win an election, but that will be the death of America if that is the case. Woof. I don't always agree with Charlie Kirk lately. Um, this time I kind of had to. How many illegals are coming across the border every day? You heard him as that, and of course it was uh, ten to fifteen thousand immigrants that were crossing the border daily, and they're all going to vote Democrat. The student admitted. So even the student is basically saying the quiet part out loud now because they know that we can't do anything about it because they know. Th this is why I laugh. And I point at anyone who tries to tell me that the 2020 election was legitimate because if you think they're going to do it in 2024, do you not think they did it in 2020? There were less illegal immigrants here, but there were still illegal immigrants here. Then, as Al brought up last hour, you had all of the unique COVID mail-in ballot situations and everything else. So... Yeah, so much fun, so little time. Because who knows? But yeah, so here we are. With them basically admitting that they are going to import voters. Which, when we've said that before, oh, it's a conspiracy theory, you don't know what you're talking about, you're crazy. You're just, you're, just, you're just a raging conservative who is afraid of his own shadow and doesn't think that if we let to, enough people in that white people are going to have the upper hand like they've had for the last 250 years. Um, I don't know where this white privilege card stuff came from, but I would like to report my lost or stolen and get a replacement, please. Just saying. Although, I guess that'll probably be the next thing I start hearing about. Well, of course you have white privilege. You started a business. Yeah, I did. This is actually the third time I will have started a business. And I went through the paperwork today to, to get the latest iteration of everything up and running. And by the time I'm all done, it will be a company that has about five or six different subsidiaries all doing little bitty things all tied to the main because it's the easiest way to keep everything separated for tax purposes. But it doesn't mean that I'm rich. I'm stringing it along, a hope and a prayer, just getting everything paid for for the year so I can just be like, okay, this is it. This is the year. It's sink or swim time. We're running towards the cliff. We got the hang glider on that we've made out of duct tape, bailing wire, and, and a curtain, and we're hoping that the damn thing's going to take off with me on it when I jump kind of where we are but this is what i've been trying to this is what i've been telling people and this is what i tell people when i speak publicly this is what i tell people when i talk about stuff like this online life is a series of choices sometimes you make the wrong ones but that means that if you get up in the morning you have the option to change course the reason this becomes important though is because something that nobody seems to understand anymore is everything that seems amazing in life is actually usually some sort of a life lesson like you, and you don't usually figure this out until you're much, much older, kind of like in the, the range of where I'm getting right now, because I'll be 51 uh, in a couple of weeks. I know. Good God, he's old. I know. I get it. I feel that way too. Although mentally, I'm still like 12, so it gets interesting. But a lot of people, when they're young, they seem like they're impatient, like they're quick to anger, like they, like they just have zero patience. But, and it's because they do. Because patience is a learned life skill. Patience is something that you learn when you start learning how to temper your anger. Now, that doesn't mean t stamp it out. That doesn't mean let the fire grow out. Because that's the other thing we're going to get into here in a minute when I finish this thought. But then, not only is it patience, wisdom is something that you gain with age. And part of the reason why you gain wisdom with age is because wisdom is what you gain from life experiences because they teach you things, whether it's having your heart broken, whether it's founding a business and having it fall apart underneath you and not knowing what to do about it, which has now happened to me, one, not well, technically twice. Um, third time, hopefully, is the charm. But 
that's where wisdom comes in. And I noticed because, you know, I, ha I have a cr close group of folks that I interact with on Twitter. They're either station folks or folks that listen to the shows. And one of our regular listeners had put out on X today that she was upset because she put out some uh, some scholarship submissions using her poetry, and she was upset because she didn't get in. And she said, well, obviously that means that I'm not any good. So the first thing I asked her was, do you enjoy doing it? And of course, this is somebody in their 20s, so I'm not begrudging her response, because her response is, well, yes, of course I enjoy it, but the fact that I didn't get anywhere with it must mean that I'm not any good. Need I remind everyone listening right now that the first podcast I ever did was so bad that we spent the entire next show making fun of it. And I've talked about this on every show that I've done at least once. The very first show that I ever did was a program called Bobbles and Nubs Present My Two Cents. We were working places that we didn't want our, ident our identities to get out. This was back when we worked at Convergis. And we just had the idea of making it like cute, cartoony, and everything else. Um, and so when I started my life on both social media and, like, well, Facebook, as far as, you know, professionally... Uh, Twitter, when it was Twitter, um, I actually was a cartoon penguin wearing a Gadsden flag shirt. And I was Wobbles the P.O. Penguin because I was always the one that seemed like I was mad at everything, so I just embraced it. So that show was originally called Wobbles and Nubs Present My Two Cents. We didn't have any idea what we were doing. My cousin, who, who happens to have a little bit of production experience, uh, found a program called uh, Blog Talk Radio. And on that program, on that group of program, our very first show, I swear, I kid you not, I was talking so fast that when I went back and listened to the playback, the first thing I thought of was Speedy Gonzalez. And my co-host partner, um, who I will not mention his name because he's not working with us anymore and I don't want anyone, ha ha, I heard about you. Yeah, we're not doing that. Uh, my co-host partner was using a Logitech uh, USB uh, headset microphone and had unbeknownst to us because it wasn't really coming through that loudly for us apparently had the the mouthpiece of the mic right under his nose because on the playback all you heard when he wasn't talking was <laughs> was it that bad? no, but it was pretty damn close so when I went back because you know, game film Especially when you're learning how to do things. So the first thing you do is you go back, you listen to all of it. You see what worked, you see what didn't, and you go from there. So the problem was absolutely nothing on that show worked. Not not for the first one anyway. It was just, it was terrible. It was so bad that if I had listened to my gut, you probably wouldn't be listening to me right now. That's just where we are. All right. We're going to have to take a quick break so I can get something ironed out in the next room. We will be right back, so don't go away. I take I know, it's not usually what I go to break with, but I gotta fix it. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Ready to stand out, Army ROTC prepares you not only as a college student, but as a strong leader, allowing you to earn the rank of second lieutenant. You will be eligible for full tuition, merit-based scholarships, and develop leadership skills essential for your future. Start strong and enhance your college experience. Visit your campus Army ROTC representative today. To find out how you can earn up to a full tuition scholarship, visit GoArmy.com slash podcast to locate your closest ROTC program today. Army officers inspire strength in others. Paid for by the United States Army. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I only have a certain budget. No problem. Right now at the LASIK Vision Institute, get 20% off LASIK when treated in April. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes, plus guaranteed financing options. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your journey towards 2020 vision. Must mention this promotion and be treated in April of 2024 to qualify. 20% off standard price of wave light procedure. Cannot be combined with any other offers. Go to GetLVILASIK.com for details. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I'm so busy right now. We offer a mix of convenient days and times, including 30-minute virtual appointments to fit your schedule. I would love it, but I have astigmatism. We treat thousands of patients with astigmatism every month with great outcomes. The LASIK Vision Institute is making your journey towards 2020 vision all about you. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your LASIK journey. 
Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're gonna stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are dollarshaveclub.com and the party is on. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. Okay, now we're back. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Life 365 is really confused right now. The rest of you are like, where have you been for like the last minute and a half? Anyway, so for those of you listening on Spreaker, let's do this again. Alright, welcome back into the program. Take two. My name is Rick Robinson. Yeah, we're trying to figure some things out. We are... We are, there are going to be some growing pains for a while. I, I have just come to terms with that because there's lots of different moving parts that I'm trying to get to come together here. And I, I know the equipment that I have coming later in the week is going to help that immensely, including for those of you listening on Spreaker that are like, your microphone sounds like trash. I know, don't judge me. <laughs> anyway, I don't, I don't know if it sounds as bad on Live 365 or not because I haven't been able to ever actually do it server test over there and listen in but anyway um i do know it sounds a lot better on the video side which is why i was trying to use some of that goodness tonight then i realized that the video side doesn't pick up anything that's not actually in that window so blah anyway we're gonna we're gonna figure some of that stuff out as we go like like i said growing pains Growing pains, growing pains, growing pains, growing pains. It's just going to be what it is. But, yeah, so back to what I was talking about before the break. Because, you know, the, this younger friend of mine was just kind of a little bit beside herself because she didn't get any scholarship opportunities off of her poetry. So the first thing I asked her was, well, do you enjoy doing it? Because that's the first thing. Look, I get it. In the world you have been told that you're supposed to take some 9-to-5 job or some 12-hour-a-day job or whatever job you have, 
whether you like it or not, whether you feel like it's crushing your soul, what, what, because you have to have the monies. And I get that. I really, really, trust me, I get that. I did that from 2009 until sept, uh, yeah, September 1st of 2023. Because that's when my company went under and that's when I, had, I, I put my family first. Instead of trying to go through the process of building another one and doing all the things, I went and got what was considered a safe job because that's what my ex-wife wanted me to do because she didn't like all the extra headaches and all the different things that I had to deal with. And then sometimes she wound up having to help me even though she volunteered to help me and then got mad about the fact that she was helping me. So eventually I just shut everything down and I went to work for Converges. But so... And the reason I'm bringing all this up is because, again, during my time at Converges, because remember, I had just watched the Obama economy kill my company. It started dying before we was ever even sworn in because everybody just already knew what was coming, kind of like what's been happening with Joe Biden. Um, but so we, we watched all this. We, we, dealt, we dealt with all this. So then I started getting politically active, and it started as a Facebook page. And the Facebook page was completely right-leaning at first, and I was kind of bored with that after a while. So I asked a friend of mine to help me do the, the, the other side of the argument, so to speak. And that was right around the time that Hannity and Combs, one of my all-time favorite Fox News shows ever, um, went away. So we got the idea of maybe we could become, you know, the podcast low rent version of Hannity and Combs, and that's where the idea came from for the cutesy little cartoon characters, etc. But again, the very first episode we ever did was trash, trash to the point where we made fun of it the next day, or the next episode, which was a week later. We spent we we were on I think for an hour and a half back then, about over half of the time that we were on air was me playing and just, well, actually the, the producer at the time, who happens to be one of my cousins, um, randomly just waiting for me to take a pause so he could play some random Speedy Gonzalez clip or waiting for my co-host to take a pause. So all you heard was, Luke, I am your father. And yes, I know that's not actually how I went, but bear with me. You, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, so I mean, we spent the entire next show completely making fun of it. And then instead of stopping, which according to my ex-wife, she now ex-wife, she really wish, wishes I would have. And I would probably still be married today if I did, because that's actually one of the sticking points. Where she got to the point where she thought what she considered my hobby, which I have now officially turned into a business again, effective today, by the way. I mean, it's, it's been one before, but it was a partnership before. So not, now the partnership has been divested. Everybody's out of it but me, and I'm going to build this shit out of it and see where it goes. But anyway, so back to what I was saying a second ago. Um, so, and one of the first indications that I knew my now ex-wife was really unhappy about this new journey that I had started was I was doing the game film thing, like I was just telling you guys a second ago. So back then, kind of like now, my studio's in one part of the room, and then the other part of the room is something else. Well, at the time... We had, uh, in the house we lived in, there was a den that was converted into a, uh, the, the, basically the master bedroom. So half of it was our room. The other half was where I worked and did all my podcast work. Um, so I'm sitting there, and I don't have any headphones on or anything. I'm just listening, kind of going back through, making notes. And she walks in and just kind of sits there for a second and looks at me, cocks her head a little bit, you know, like a, a this is not not meant as an insult, but it's actually what it reminded me of. She just kind of cocked her head for a second, you know, like when a dog is really, really confused. And then she just looks at me and says, like, what the hell are you listening to? I'm like, it's the podcast we just recorded earlier today while you were at work. Why? She said, that's not you. That can't be you. I said, well, it is me. You know, and then, then the other guy came on. She's like, and who's that? And I said, it's another guy that I, that I work with. And she was like, well, he sounds normal. I'm like, okay. You sound like Big Bird. <laughs> and then just turns around all huffy and walks out of the room. So for those of you who wonder why I don't sound like Big Bird now, it's because I taught myself how to sound like I was talking on the radio. Because, and, and I, I think one of the first times I really, really, really ever pissed off my now ex-wife about this was when I publicly told this story on KOKC 1520 AM 
and then basically said, and thanks to you, honey, I now have a radio voice, and I'm sitting at an actual radio station. Yeah, she did not like that very much at all, I don't think. I don't really know why, though. I mean, hell, we've known each other for forever. She knew, She's always known I was a smartass. Anyway, um, but yeah, so where am I going with all this? If it's something that you like to do, who gives a crap what anybody else thinks? That's something, you know how many years it has taken me to learn that? My entire life was a series of me running away from the things that I really felt like I was supposed to do because I was too terrified to do them, for the most part. Now, there were times I started, you know, figuring stuff out, and then, and I firmly believe it's because I wasn't on the on the right path, because I've been going through it again. Uh, there were things that have happened that were like, yeah, no, this wasn't what I wanted you to do, so we're now you get to go through this. And it's like, okay, God, I get it. That's like me since I've been divorced. I have expressed interest in two women in four years. Both of which treated me pretty much by the time it was all said and done in exactly the same fashion as my ex-wife did. So it was just one of those things, and, and I, I said this to a friend today. I'm like, I, I, I think I finally get it. I think the universe is telling me that in this season I am supposed to be alone. Because when I stick to that, things start falling into place. When I don't, bad things happen. And it's like, oh, look, I found somebody that likes me. And the universe is like, kick him in the jimmy again. <laughs> and that's exactly what it feels like. And then it's like, no, focus over here. Bad human, focus over here. Yeah, that, that's kind of been my life for the last four years. But it, partly it's because it's taken me so long to get used to being alone again. Because, you know, when, I mean, we were together for a long time. Because we were together for forever before we even got married. We were together for five years before we got married. And she left me uh, right before what would have been, uh, well, we were headed into our 18th anniversary when she left me. So we were together for 23 years total. I don't know very many people who at 23 years just say, eh, nope, I found somebody else. Because normally by then you're used to each other and you're comfortable. Even if you're not happy, you're just so comfortable you don't want to see about making making the changes. Um, all I know is with as much crap as I've given her, as of right now, I just want to officially say thank you. Because I would not be doing what I am doing right now. Whether this takes off whether it crashes and burns, I wouldn't I wouldn't have known or gotten to the point where I am right now if, again, she hadn't basically looked at me and said, okay, Big Bird, I'm out. You know, kind of tying the two stories back together. But this is part of the... Uh, the trust me, I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. The reason I'm saying all this, though, is if there are parts of your life that you don't feel like are where they should be, then take stock about it. Reevaluate. And ask yourself, is this something that I'm doing because I want to do it? Or is this something that I'm doing because I feel like I have to do it? And especially with what it is that you do for a living, if you answer that question as, well, I feel like I have to do this, then I urge you to find a hobby. Because with technology the way it is today, anybody can at least try to monetize their hobby. Dude, I know people that get paid to go on vacation now, which is insane to me. And it started, they started a little company like I'm doing right now, and they went on vacation for the first time when they were working for the company that they work for now, or, or that they that they don't work for anymore, and they came home, they put, they put a blog together, they put out a blog post, they put up some videos on the blog post, and now here they are seven years later, basically, now not only do they do reviews of vacations, they're actually travel agents too. So they are booking people to go on travel agents. They're using the experiences from them going on those vacations to help sell them to those points. And they're making money giving reviews to the places that, that, that they go to. As And that's, that's what I'm saying. And you may ask yourself, well, you know, the title of the show tonight is everything, you know, the issues hitting the fan. When are we going to get to that point? We're all living it right now. I mean, how many times do I have to talk about the same things over and over and over again is point number one. But point number two is even with as bad as things are, even with as broke as we are, and we're going to be getting into that in a second, I promise, things could be much worse because 
technology is now making it possible for things to do for people to do things they never thought possible before i'm living proof of that i now have the capability to be monetized across three different uh, accounts through x we now have the ability uh, from the KLR Radio Mothership to stream to five separate platforms video-wise once I get all the kinks worked out, and to live simulcast to our website through Live 365 and Spreaker all at the same time. And then, eventually, what we're going to do is change how we do the podcast side of things because there's monetization built in there and I think it's going to make things a little bit easier then we have the subscriber side that we're going to start building up soon now, and it took me forever now we actually have we are beginning to put together merchandise for the merch store that I have been wanting to do for like 10 years because I now have time to start focusing on this stuff little bit by little bit by little bit so like I said, I'm putting myself on a clock with a lot of things my biggest goal is to have us to 24-7 live stream programming through Live 365 within the next six months. And six months after that, KLR Radio, America's Podcast Network, will be America's Broadcast Network because that stream carried through Live 365 will be carried and cataloged through iHeartRadio, one of the biggest media companies in the world. And it's all because I just refuse to give up. So, where am I going with this? Because things have hit the, hit the fan. Everything sucks. And there's just no way around trying to say that everything sucks. As a matter of fact, just to go, just to get to the point of the show, since Biden has taken office, overall prices are up 19.4%. 19 Food prices are up 21.1%. Rent has increased 20.9%. Electricity currently gone up 28.3%. And that, my friends, is what we call Bidenomics. This is why, when you go back to the video we were listening to earlier, this is why they are trying to import voters. The reason I don't think it's going to work this time, because it, it has worked before, but the reason that I don't think it's going to work this time is because governors like DeSantis and Abbott have started making blue cities in blue states that have declared themselves both sanctuary cities and sanctuary states to put their money where their mouth is. So now you have folks in Chicago going to city council meetings and screaming about how if they don't fix it, these people are voting for Trump. And not the people that you would think. I don't like it. And it, same thing Al said. I don't know. What I know is I am doing, I am going to start doing what I have to do to make sure that no matter what, my family is insulated from the, from the craziness. One of the f only ways that I know to do that is to get away from the 20, uh, get away from the 40 hour a week grind. And, and even though it's guaranteed, because it's, it's never going to be enough money. And that's not that's not the fault of the companies. I know they want to blame the companies. That's 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 not their fault. At least not completely. I mean, come on. Some some of it is. Let's be honest. Because I always tell you guys I'm going to be honest. So some of it is the fault of the companies. But the other thing is the fact that no matter how much the company pays you, depending on where you live, you're paying out by the time it's all said and done, fifty to fifty five percent of your income in taxes in one form or another. And thanks to Joe Biden, it's about to get even worse because he's hell-bent on making sure that those Trump tax cuts expire. I don't know about you, but thanks to those Trump tax cuts and to some of the other Trump-era policies, when I was working for the state of Oklahoma through the University of Oklahoma, I got raises three times in three years after working there for five years and only getting one. This is the point that I have been trying to make. Whatever you think about Donald Trump, whatever you think about whatever happened between Donald Trump and Stormy Daniels, which is now being drug all through the papers again and all through the media again, just remember this. She lost her case. She technically owes him money. I don't see anybody coming after her because she's not running for president. 
and I get it. Everybody's like, well, you're a pastor. You're a devout Christian. How can you support a man like Donald Trump? Same reason Israel supported David. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand from a Christian perspective, every single sin carries the same weight. So if I have to disavow one because of sin, then I would have to disavow all. It doesn't matter who they are. That's why Jesus says, don't worry about the log, or the, the splendor in your neighbor's eye. Worry about the log in your own. Because if we lived that way, and you're seeing it happen every single day, everywhere, well, they're not devout enough, so they can't be an actual Christian. You don't know that. Do you know how many people think I'm not a Christian just because I cuss? Should I cuss as much as I do? Probably not. But God knew I was going to cuss before he ever made me. He made me. This is, this is the part that I'm trying to make everybody understand. Despite how bad things are, especially if you are a person of faith, then you have to believe that there is a guiding principle or guiding being working somewhere in the universe to make things the way that they want them to be. Which is why sometimes you just got to say, I'm stepping out in faith. And that's a, and I, I hate to keep coming back to myself, but that's exactly what I did. I didn't know how I was going to do this at first. I knew I had the, the potential to get in, uh, income coming in through my retirement, and I've got some other things that pay me money every month. But it still wasn't anything like what I was making before. But I just knew that if I just did it, I, I would figure out a way. Because sometimes you just have to do it. That's like the guy that, and I can't think of his real name right now. I wish I could. I think he goes by the persistence on Twitter. Um, basically, he quit his job. After he got President, Trump, President Trump's attention for cleaning up after they had a rally in, I think it was Chicago or something. And they wound up leaving it better than they found it. So then he started hearing complaints about cities like Baltimore and stuff like that. So he started organizing cleanup campaigns. And they went so well and they were so well received. The guy has now quit his job and is doing voter registration drives all over the country. Again, technology, as bad as it is, as scary as it can be, especially with everything that's going on with AI... Technology is allowing people's lives to be changed. I mean, say what you want about Elon Musk, dude's a genius. He just put an implant in somebody's brain that allowed somebody that is com was completely unable to communicate or anything else, at least to my understanding, to be able to control like computers and stuff using that implant to send the signals so he can now communicate for the first time. In either forever or in a very long time because I don't have that story in front of me. But again, it's all about your perspective. I mean, I could sit here and I could let as bad as everything is because it's bad. It's bad everywhere. I mean, I couldn't even do the show last night because Mother Nature was throwing a fit. I was looking forward to that show because that's when we were going to test out a bunch of stuff, which is why I just did it. Which I'm glad I did because now I realize there are some things I still have to figure out. But that's why we do what we do. To not only try to make our corner of the world a better place, but to try to impact those around us in a positive way. And so we can continue to learn because... Another problem that we have in this country is we have too many people that once they retire, that they just don't do anything. And eventually you just watch them kind of just go off in a spiral and then never be seen from again. Because despite what Biden tells you, despite what TV tells you, despite what pretty much anybody tells you, we are not supposed to be sedentary, sed sedentary creatures. All right, so I guess it doesn't really matter because there's not anything on behind me. We're probably going to run a little bit long, and we're not going to take another break. Um, I just want to play some of this. We may not play the whole thing, but this is from the remarks from the White House Correspondence Center. Uh, this is Colin Yost, so hang on. 
thought it may be calling you. I think I muted it earlier when I was testing something. One moment, please. Ooh. Thank you, everyone. Hello. That was hard-hitting journalism you saw in the owl. I didn't know you were going to show photos of me from high school. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not really fair. Um, you can't do it for President Biden because the technology wasn't invented when he was in high school. <laughs> it's not really fair. Good evening, everyone. I'm Colin Jost, and I'll be delivering the Republican response. I'll be honest with you, I don't have a lot of time. Uh, I need to get back to New York because I'm juror number five on a big trial. Trump's lawyer took one look at me and he's like, he's got to be on our side. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly, for that very kind introduction. Mr. President, Dr. Biden, Vice President Harris, Doug. <laughs> oh, good Lord, you can hear her laugh from there. Doug, as you can tell from all the comments about my wife, I'm also used to being the second gentleman. I am honored to be here hosting what is, according to swing state polls, the final White House Correspondents' Dinner. <laughs> I hope that tonight will be a night to remember for most of us. I was excited to be up here on stage with President Biden tonight, mostly to see if I could figure out where Obama was pulling the strings from. <laughs> I have oh to, God, I have to he admit, actually moved his arm. See, this is President why I want to get the video stuff. I mean, it's not out. always easy following what he's saying. Like, But before I begin tonight, can we just acknowledge how refreshing it is to see a president of the United States at an event that doesn't begin with a bailiff saying, all rise. <laughs> and I would like to point out, it's after 10 p.m., Sleepy Joe is still awake. while Donald Trump has spent the past week falling asleep in court every morning. <laughs> Though Fox News said he was just being anti-woke. <laughs> we are all here tonight at Nerd Prom. Well, Matt Gates is at regular prom, but <laughs> I actually thought I saw Matt Gates here tonight, but it was actually just my own reflection in a spoon. <laughs> like many of you here tonight, you I pretend to do news on TV. My weekend update co-anchor, Michael Che, was going to join me here tonight, but in solidarity with President Biden, I decided to lose all my black support. <laughs> che told me to say that, and I'm just realizing I was set up. I've done Weekend Update for a while now, but most people don't know that I started out doing the actual news. My first job out of college was as a reporter for the Staten Island Advance newspaper. 
They do not have a table here tonight. <laughs> but they asked me to pass along this message to the other print journalists in the room. You think you're better than me? By the way, I want to point out, when I worked at the Staten Island Advance, we had a daily circulation of 100,000. The Washington Post would kill for that. <laughs> so as a former aspiring journalist, I want to genuinely congratulate all the award winners here tonight. Congratulations. The Correspondents Association provides scholarships to promising young journalism students who may one day be sent off to cover dangerous geopolitical hotspots like Columbia University. <laughs> Tonight, this event is being televised live on C-SPAN. And if you're at home watching C-SPAN on a Saturday night, I hope they find your body soon. <laughs> Before your cats get to it. <laughs> there are so many incredible news organizations here tonight. Also a few credible ones. The Washington Post is here, Washington Post. They were the ones taking your coats at the door. Please be sure to tip. Fox News is here tonight. It's the end of an era. Rupert Murdoch stepped down at Fox News, which is strange. I didn't think there was a step down from Fox News. Trump Media is here. Trump Media. Corner to no one. Wordle is here tonight. Sorry, sorry, I meant the New York Times. I forgot they do stuff in addition to puzzles. I have to say, it's not a great sign when the only thing keeping a print media company alive are games people play on their phones. <laughs> Too chilling for you guys? <laughs> Room just froze faster than Mitch McConnell. <laughs> and I have to say apologies to the Times, but as a Staten Islander, I still get all my news from the New York Post. Thank you. The only paper where the front page always has the same 200-point font, whether the headline is World War III to start tomorrow or Central Park Owl dead in building collision. The Ozarks, it's more than a place. Hang on. It's a feeling. It's the feeling of disconnecting. The New York Post is like having the New York Times summarized for you by a crackhead. <laughs> the Times will say, a border deal continues to evade Congress. And the Post is like, these Mexicans are taking my stuff. There are so many incredible individuals here tonight. Laura Trump is here tonight. Okay, I got one woo. She recently released a cover of the song, I Won't Back Down. Upon hearing it, Tom Petty died again. I can't believe I'm saying this to a member of the Trump family, but maybe stick to politics? Senator Bernie Sanders is here because he's not the type to pass up a free hot meal. And in general, there are so many hardworking, 
influential senators and Congress people here tonight. And I just want to say, on behalf of everyone I know, stop emailing us. <laughs> stop it. We get it. Democracy is on the line. And your plan to save it is to flood our inboxes like your crate and barrel. It's also wonderful to be back in Washington. I love being in Washington. The last time I was in DC, I left my cocaine at the White House. <laughs> Luckily, the president was able to put it to good use for his State of the Union. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. The president doesn't call it cocaine. He calls it high-speed rail. By the way, can you blame the guy for turning to cocaine? He must be exhausted, orchestrating four separate trials against his rival, rigging the Super Bowl, and gearing up to steal a second election. Wow. Colin Yost, Arkansas, I did film in 11. I love, by the way, that Trump's two attacks on President Biden are that he's a senile old man and a criminal mastermind. <laughs> I'm like, I think you got to pick one. <laughs> Personally, I don't know any criminal masterminds who bike to get ice cream. <laughs> also, it's not like Trump himself is young and sharp. I'm not saying both candidates are old, but you know Jimmy Carter is out there thinking, I could maybe win this thing. <laughs> He's only 99. <laughs> there is an election. There is an election six extremely long months from now. So let me see if I can summarize where this race stands at this moment. The Republican candidate for president owes half a billion in fines for bank fraud and is currently spending his days farting himself awake during a porn star hush money trial and the race is tied? The race is tied. Nothing makes sense anymore. The candidate, who is a famous New York City playboy, took abortion rights away, and the guy who's trying to give you your abortion rights back is an 80-year-old Catholic. How does that make sense? <laughs> By the way, President Biden, isn't it crazy that he's only our second Catholic president? And what's even crazier is that in just a few short months, we'll have our third in RFK Jr. <laughs> I'm kidding. Like his vaccine card says, he doesn't have a shot. <laughs> Everything feels strange now. By a lot of measures, President Biden is having a very successful first term, but people don't seem to realize it. Like with the economy, the vibes are bad, but the numbers say it's strong. The economy is kind of like you on the steps of Air Force One. It feels like it's stumbling, but there is somehow upward progress. I do think that you can do more on the economy, sir. I really do. For example, have you considered eliminating the national debt by shorting Trump stock? <laughs> People keep asking if our lives are better than they were four years ago. Of course they are. Four years ago, we didn't have online sports gambling. What more do you need? That, by the way, that's probably what's keeping the economy afloat. 
online gambling and Taylor Swift. Without those, we'd be in a recession right now. We're already in a recession, my dude. The problem is people are always going to compare your first term to Obama's. But I think there are actually a lot of positive similarities. You both made big strides in health care. Obama got us out of a recession. You got us out of a pandemic. Obama got oh, in yeah, line. You got OJ. And by the way, now that OJ's dead, who is the new frontrunner for Trump's VP? Is it Diddy? By the way, I bet if Trump did select Diddy as his running mate, I bet this race would still be tied. He sounds a little bitter about that. I think that, don't even he? some Democrats say that they are underwhelmed, but I think they're just not living in reality. Manage your expectations, people. It's like tonight. Sure, we all wish we were at the Waldorf right now, but we're at the Washington Hilton. <laughs> and we have to make the best of it. <laughs> Just be happy you're not at the airport, Hilton. <laughs> Journalists, these are challenging times, and we need the people in this room to help guide us through it. Your jobs are not easy, and it doesn't help that we're living at the end of traditional media. The gatekeepers are gone. Did you know that 90% of people now get their news exclusively from social media? And that must be true, because I saw it in a random guy's TikTok. <laughs> he was recording the video while driving a Toyota Corolla, but he seemed to know his stuff. Isn't it crazy, by the way, that TikTok could be outlawed in the U.S. by the end of this year? That's a real shame, because we're going to need TikTok to document who is storming the Capitol next January 6th. <laughs> Things are not bad for everyone, though. This may be the worst time in history to be a print journalist. It is the best time in history to be a courtroom sketch artist. My God, the most famous man on earth is on trial and there's no cameras allowed. Just the artists, their pastels, and their desire to make Trump look as bad as possible. Every sketch of Trump looks like the Grinch had sex with the Lorax. In closing, this $30 bag is taking the travel industry by storm. Eh, you know what? I think that's about enough of that anyway. I played a little bit more of it than I wanted to because I hadn't actually got a chance, got a chance to see all of it because, well, see any of it because Rudy and I were testing a bunch of stuff last night. Um, all I have to say is I can kind of understand why under Donald Trump they really didn't do those. It's not funny anymore. I mean, I mean there were a couple of these at once and... I think sometimes Joe Biden playing along made it that much funnier because he did. It's like he almost didn't realize he was the butt of the joke, or something. But I don't know. Anyway, um, we have reached the point, ladies and gentlemen, because we're actually over time. That I do have to tell you that this particular show, she is over. For anybody that may have caught the stream over on Live 365, thank you so much for hanging out. We'll be live full time over there coming soon. We're gonna get some things ironed out and uh, do that here. With, uh, probably my plan is to have the stream up and running over there full time by about mid May because we're still trying to still trying to get some some growing pains out of the way. For those of you listening on the speaker, thank you so much for hanging out. For those of you listening on the website, thank you so much, especially for those of you that were chatting along in the chat room. If anybody caught us for the few minutes we were live on both Facebook and X, thank you so much for hanging out over there. But this is the time where I have to tell, well, I guess we're not there yet. Follow along with the station at KLR Radio. Follow along with me at RowdyRick73. I'll be back um, Tuesday doing the Rick Robinson Show live right here, 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern, every Tuesday through Friday. 
Uh, that I'll be producing for, he said, she, well, no, Cocktail Lounge. He said, she said, it's Friday. Uh, Aggie time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. That'll be it for Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, same bat time, same bat channel in the afternoon, so we're not going to keep saying that one. Uh, also, the whatever program will be live with myself and Stacy, 7 p.m. Eastern. The uh, Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show, 8 p.m. Eastern. This will be the last night for the Red Wine to be on 9 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday because they're actually moving to Mondays, three Mondays out of the month because one Monday spoken for, so uh, which is when Aggie and Jeff do their book podcast, so that would stay on where it is. Um, then Thursday, again, Rick Robinson Show. Hopefully Jen will be available for Jen and Rick. There have been some, uh, we're getting in the summertime, so there's been some scheduling stuff going on, but I kind of expect that. Um, and then Friday, same bad time, same bad channel for the afternoon show. And then I'll be doing He Said, She Said with Aggie. And we may do a makeup jux. I say may, because it depends on if I get my new setup ready in time. Because my new equipment gets here on Friday, and I'm so excited. But I don't want to make Aggie miss a show, so we're, we're doing it. Saturday. All right, that's it. When I'm not doing all that, you can find me as a contributor on the LoftusParty.com website, Twitchy.com, and MrsPolitics.com. I'm also the executive producer of the Rick uh, Rick Robinson Show, <laughs> the, the Loftus Party podcast, through my production company that will be uh, up and running officially soon, Kung Fu Productions. If you don't know where that came from, ask Michael; he'll tell you. He used to call me Kung Fu Rick, so it kind of became a thing. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be one of the, the subsidiaries up and running soon because I'm going to start offering my services for that, too, to the more than a few people that I do already. Anyway, um, I think that's it. And if not, you guys know most of this stuff already anyway because you've been listening for forever. We will see you guys when we see you, but it's over. What? Over? Did you say Over? Nothing is over until we decide it is. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Hell no! Closing time. Open all the doors and let you out into the world. This isn't over until I say it's over! Closing time. Well, that's great. That's just fucking great, man. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? Game over, man. Game over. Closing time, time for you to go out to the places you will be from. Closing time, this room won't be open till your brothers or your sisters come. I love you, Oklahoma. What a great crowd. I love you. Slept the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through